What's up guys, Skia here, back with another streaming tutorial for you. Uh, in our last streaming tutorial part one, we kind of went over all of the stuff you would need to get started, such as a broadcasting software like OBS Studio, which is what you see on the screen here. And then uh, chat bots, uh, alert systems, just kind of the basic stuff to get you going, right? So in this video, we're gonna dive in and take a look at optimal settings in OBS. And I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna explain everything as best I can. This is gonna be a bit of a technical overview. Um, I don't just want to throw settings at you and say, hey, do these, because that doesn't work for everybody. But what I wanna do is give you guys an idea of, uh, give you guys an idea of kind of why one would choose one setting over another or how you might configure that to best suit you. And I think if you have a little bit of an understanding of how these work, then that's gonna help lay a foundation. You're gonna be able to make your stream look a lot better that way because you know, you'll know based on your parameters what you can achieve. And um, that's kind of the whole goal, getting a stream, getting your stream to look as best as you can make it look uh, with the equipment and the connection speed and everything that you, you have, right? Because you're probably not, you know, if you're a partnered streamer and you do this for a living, then this is probably not the video for you. You you probably have, you know, a monster computer, all the equipment you need, a uh, massive internet connection. You can kind of stream at whatever quality you want to. You have uh, encoding options, which I'll talk about. I'll explain what that means. And um, <clears throat> right, so you have a lot more, you have a lot more freedom, right? You can be pretty liberal with uh, the quality of your stream and what you're outputting to the viewer. So let's dive right into this. Um, and I'm going to go through and explain, like I said, kind of why uh, why you're going to want to utilize each setting the way I'm presenting it. And uh, especially, like I said, for those who are not partnered or um, those who even are not affiliated. If you're affiliated, then you have these encoding options available to you. Likely, um, if you've heard, if you've hit kind of a certain average viewer, um, for example, I'm an affiliate. I'm not a partner, but uh, typically speaking. I always have encoding options available on my stream, which means I can, if I want to, push my stream a little bit harder and I can display a higher level of, of quality and um, video and audio output because uh, people who, um, who are viewing my stream have the option to turn that down, right? You might notice. So what are encoding options are? Let's start with that. Encoding options on a stream, you've probably seen the ability to click on the gear icon on, uh, on a user's stream and or on a on a streamer's uh, channel or whatever and uh, you might have a source button or a quality button right and you can usually select source 720p 1080p 480p 160p i think something in between there and uh, that will dictate the essentially the quality of the stream that you receive not necessarily the quality of the stream that they're pushing to twitch and so this allows, you know, this allows, let's say me, if I'm streaming, I can stream at a, at a much higher quality and which takes up a lot more bandwidth, a lot more internet utilization. So, you know, you guys have to download my stream essentially as I'm uploading my stream, you guys have to download my stream in this example. So having the quality options means you can download a lot less data and thus stress your internet connection a lot less if you have maybe a poor internet connection or you're viewing um, the stream on a mobile phone like this, you might be using your, you know, your, your phone's data connection instead of uh, Wi-Fi or something like that, or maybe you're on a poor Wi-Fi signal at a coffee shop or whatever. And um, you can tone that stream down, that data you receive, so you don't get buffering. That's kind of the end goal. You don't want your viewers to ever buffer if you can avoid it. However, you also want to keep your stream a high enough quality that it's worth sticking around and watching. So there's a fine line to walk there that we're going to try and cover here. So that's kind of a, an idea of what we're going to do here and why, why this is important if you don't have those encoding options on your stream. And one thing to note is if you are partners, if I'm not mistaken, are guaranteed that encoding, affiliates are not guaranteed to have that encoding on their stream, right? So you have to if, if resources are available, it's allocated to you on Twitch's end because Twitch re-encodes this stream and then puts it out at multiple different um, different bit rates, essentially. I'll show you what all that means. And uh, <clears throat> you are given those options if, you, if the resources are available 
and you have a stream with enough viewership that it warrants giving you those tools, right? So you may not always have them, okay? And if you're not an affiliate, then you're even below that and you likely will never have them until you reach affiliate status. Uh, you can, if resources are available, they will give non-affiliates encoding options, um, but resources have, to, resources have to be available. So it's likely gonna be at a time when not a lot of other streamers are online. So just assume you don't have encoding options and let's go from there. So basically what we're gonna do, this is gonna be your, right? So this is probably how OBS looks for you guys. And you probably have different scenes, sources set up at this point, maybe some stuff like that, right? But this is just basically what OBS looks like. So I am on a profile called Stream Tutorial where I just have basic settings going on, right? I haven't actually changed anything. So I'm gonna go through these with you guys. So we're gonna go ahead and click on the settings here. And let's make sure you can see that without my camera being in the way. In my last video, I noticed that my camera was in the way of the scenes in the bottom left. So I kind of put it in a different place so that you guys can see what I'm doing a little bit easier. And I'm not obstructing any of the important stuff. So <clears throat> let's change this theme first and foremost. This is probably what you guys see. Maybe you have the dark theme, but just in case you're curious why mine's dark, that's the theme right there. So all the general settings, these again are just settings. They're not, um, they're not really, I changed something, I didn't want to do that. Um, these aren't going to affect your quality so much. And then stream, this is just where you put in your stream key uh, from Twitch, which again, if you haven't seen how to do that, I show you how to do that in my previous video. Uh, so go ahead and you know get make sure all that's done. Output is kind of where we're gonna start for stream quality, okay? So what I recommend doing is you swapping this to advanced. I recommend swapping this to advanced over simple. This will give us a lot more granular control over what we're doing. And we're gonna focus on this streaming tab, okay? Streaming and then audio as well, but mainly streaming. The recording tab is just for recorded video, which you can set this up to record video um, and you can record simultaneously while you're streaming or just individually like I'm doing now. And uh, we'll cover that in another video. Let's focus on streaming right now. So let's just go through these settings one by one. Um, you're just gonna wanna keep your audio track one, right? Keep it on audio track one for streaming. Simple, you don't have to worry about this too much unless you're trying to do multiple tracks of audio with different bit rates and stuff like that. You're probably not gonna be doing that. Um, and we'll, we'll cover that in our audio section in a future video. As for the encoder, I have, you see here, I have three settings, NVENC, QuickSync, and X264. NVENC is my hardware encoding chip on my NVIDIA graphics card, which allows me to encode my stream or my recorded video using my graphics card, graphics card's built-in chip. And uh, this can be really nice, especially for recorded video. Um, typically speaking, using this requires a higher bit rate, which you can see right here. And we'll go over what the bit rate actually does technically in a moment. Um, it requires a higher bit rate to produce uh, a similar quality to X264. Quick Sync is for your built-in Intel chip. For me, Intel graphics card that's built into my processor, and I'm not really going to use that. Uh, you might have an AMD option here. If you have an AMD graphics card or an AMD processor, you'll, you'll see that in here. Um, X264 is your software encoder. What that means is it's doing all of the work um, basically from a software perspective. So it's putting, it's, it's putting all of that load right on your processor. Just the whole thing, bam, right in the processor. Like you're gonna use processor resources to encode the video if you're on X264. That being said, if you have a spectacular processor, like if you have a Ryzen, uh, you know, Ryzen 7 or something like that, that is really, really good at multi-threaded performance, or really, uh, it has a lot of multi-threaded performance, then X264 is going to definitely be good for you. Um, I actually stream on this NVENC because I play a lot of games that <coughs> uh, require processing power, like World of Warcraft. When I stream Hearthstone, that's kind of my primary game. Um, I can kind of stream on whatever I want to, but I've gotten good settings with NVENC where I'm pretty decently happy with the quality. And uh, so I kind of just stick to that for everything because I figured out how to make it look good for me and something that I'm happy with. But if you're not, if you're not doing a graphically intense or a processor intensive game, 
than uh, X264 and you have the resources, you have a good processor, X264 is going to be the way to go, typically speaking. Uh, but let's go through each of these so you know what the NVENC and X264 looks like and what settings you can do to increase your stream quality. Um, and again, if you have an AMD card, that will be in here as well. And they're going to be similar settings to NVENC, maybe not exactly the same, but very similar. So this should apply to you as well. It's again, it's not going to be exact, but it should apply to you. So let's start with the NVENC or the on graphic card uh, hardware chip settings. So first and foremost, we're going to enforce streamer uh, streaming service encoder settings. It's just uh, settings that comes from Twitch, OBS conforms to that. You kind of want that, obviously, so your stream is compliant with Twitch. Pretty simple. Uh, rescale output. You don't want to do this. What this is going to do is rescale your output through the encoder right here um, while it's encoding. And we don't want to do this. We're going to do this in the video tab later on. I'll show you why. Rate control. You're generally going to be setting that to CBR, which means constant bit rate versus VBR, which is a variable bit, variable bit rate. Uh, CQP, I'm not 100% sure what that stands for, to be honest with you guys. Lossless means no compression. So that's going to be just straight video output at, at the basically the highest quality that you can output. Do not select that. Uh, that's going to be insane, uh, an insane amount of data that you have to push. Uh, CBR is what Twitch recommends that you do. You can stream in VBR, but let's CBR is going to be the overall best quality, typically speaking. Bit rate. This is the important one. So your bit rate essentially means how many bytes of data you're going to send to Twitch at one time. And you can see here my bit rate is at 2500. That's just the default. I'm going to go ahead and set this to uh, 3340. Okay. There's a reason I'm doing that. And um, this means I'm going to be sending. Uh, 3.3 megabits of data to Twitch every second, essentially. And that means you as the viewer or whoever is viewing you has to download 3.3, well, 3.34 really, megabits of data every second to watch your stream, right? And then that circles back to the encoding options. If they lower that quality, it's gonna go to a less, you know, a lower bit rate and thus they have to download less data every second. So what I recommend is sticking around 3,500 total bit rate. And when I say total, um, when I say total, I mean combined video bit rate and audio bit rate. You have to account for your audio bit rate because right now our track one, which is what we're using for streaming, as you remember our track one here, our audio bit rate is 160, which is a good place to leave it at for, for Twitch. You can go pretty high, um, but I don't actually know that Twitch will output 320. I think it may, uh, may re-encode it back to 160 when it outputs it to the viewer. Um, I'm not 100% sure on that, but that may be a thing. So I leave it at this because again, 320 is just, that's 320. You know, 320 is CD quality audio basically. And that's, that's um, an extra 160 uh, audio or 160 um, points, data, bytes of data, whatever you want to call it. Um, in my bit rate that I could use for my video. And the video is going to be the stressing one. That's going to be the one that's going to degrade significantly. Uh, your audio is not going to be as noticeable. So I keep that a little bit lower. Uh, 160 is a happy medium. So you can see here now th uh, 3340 and 160 is a combined total bit rate of 3500, right? So bam, there you go. 3500. The reason I say 3500 is because 3.5 megabits of data uh, downloading is not that much. Um, and generally mobile phones can support that. You know, they have the, the internet capabilities to do that. Typically speaking, most people's internet connections will be able to handle that. You should be able to handle that as well. If you have a decent upload speed, if you're on like one of the lowest tiers of internet through your provider, you may have to lower this. And that's one thing too, to note about bitrate is that it is subjective to how much you can actually push out. So I have a, an upload speed of 30 megabits per second. So I could technically take this up to like 30,000. Um, I'm most certainly not going to do that. And Twitch will not like it if I do that at all. They, they do have a limit um, on what they'll accept typically. And I believe that limit is now 6,000. So six megabits per second. It may be eight. Um, or maybe you can, I, th I know you can fudge it a little bit. But so if you have, you know, typically speaking, um, 
an average upload is pretty low. Like just the the American average upload is pretty low. I'm not sure for other countries. Um, I know we have one of the worst internet connection speeds. Uh, so yay, yay us. But uh, 3,500 hitting that mark with a combined total bit rate of audio and video is gonna be pretty good, right? It's gonna be pretty good. You're gonna get some artifacting in your video or in your in your gameplay if there's a lot of movement. Can't really avoid that without cranking that bit rate high or uh, going to X264, and we'll explain that in a moment. So let's stick with 3340, unless your upload speed can't support that. We're then gonna set a keyframe interval of two, and that's because that's what Twitch wants us to do. It says in their uh, in their FAQ and their you know their information their knowledge base set it to two so we're setting it to two preset for NVENC remember we're in NVENC not X two six four I'm I'm setting mine to high quality I've noticed an improvement when I set it to high quality so I'm going to set it to high quality um, it does use a little more resources to do this so you can play with this if you need you know if if you have a really 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 low end computer typically NVENC uses very Excuse me very little to no resources so i crank that up profile main uh twitch asks us to do main or high so we're going to stick with main level leave that on auto it'll pick the best one for you use two pass encoding keep it checked uh, that's just part of the nvenc encoding process uh, gpu is set to zero meaning um, i only have one gpu in my computer so this is using that GPU. You would set it to one if you had like two, if you had, if you were running in maybe SLI or um, whatever setup you got going, you can change this if you have multiple cards. Um, but just leave that on zero if you have a single GPU. Uh, B frames, leave that on two, don't mess with that. So this is, these are the settings for NVNC. Let's take a look at uh, X264. So we're going to kind of do the same thing on this one. We're going to say enforce streaming service encoder settings. Rescale output, we're going to leave that blank. We're going to do that later. We're going to choose CBR. And then this one's, you know, you notice we have a little bit of, uh, we have some other options under rate control, but we still have our VBR and our CBR. We're going to leave it on CBR. We're going to set this to that same uh, bit rate. And uh, do not use a custom buffer size. Just let that, just chill with that as unchecked keyframe interval too because again that's what twitch asks us to do and then we get to our main setting for x264 our cpu preset meaning and what it even says right here higher equals less cpu so if i drop this down you'll see the higher ones up here use less cpu than the lower ones down here we even get into placebo which means you're not even going to notice a difference but your computer will be slow as hell you're not you don't want to be down here um even on really high-end computers, this is ridiculous and unnecessary. So the, it defaults you to very fast, okay? Um, I have a, let me give you guys an example. I have uh, an older processor, but it's still good. It's an i7-4700 or 4770. Uh, very fast, I can do no problem, uh, typically speaking. Again, unless it's a, a game that's really processor intensive, rendering a lot of like models and rendering a lot of uh, data, you know, like, World of Warcraft, DPS numbers and numbers on the screen, that's all on my processor. So, um, you know, that makes it a little bit trickier to do this. I do lose some frames in the process of doing this. But sticking to very fast is typically okay. Very fast is gonna give you a similar quality to X264 or to NVENC, I'm sorry, to NVENC. Very fast will, typically speaking, unless you have an older NVIDIA graphics card, it may look a little worse. NVENC may, may look a little worse than very fast under X264. Um, that being said, uh, you are going to use more resources using your um, X264 under very fast, but you will probably get a little bit better quality. That is not an exact science. NVENC does not always equal very fast. It may equal super fast or ultra fast, right? And you might get a lot of artifacting. On newer graphics cards like the 10 series NVIDIA cards, um, it is going to be pretty comparable to very fast. I, on my 970 GTX, I did not notice a significant difference between very fast and the NVENC encoder. It may have been slightly better on X264 with very fast, but not noticeably, right? Not, I wasn't sitting there going, oh God, that is so much better. Why aren't I doing, no, it was like, it was, 
it was like splitting hairs for me personally. And everybody's going to, it's a little subjective. Quality is going to be a, a hair subjective. I mean, it is quality is pretty quanti uh, you know, quantitative. You can, quality is quality. It's either quality or it's not quality. But you, you can kind of decide for yourself. There are variables in there like monitor, you know, just different things. So I'm getting off topic though. So what you can do if you have a really good processor is you can crank this up. Right? You can get up to faster, fast, medium, maybe even slow, although that's probably unnecessary ultimately. Medium is a really nice quality. And what this is going to do is it's going to um, put more strain on your computer in order to produce a better quality stream with less artifacting, less blurriness and fuzziness when there's movement going on um, under the same bit rate that you might that you're that you're using. So I can stick under I can stick with the same bit rate of 3340 um, and an audio of 160 to combine to make a combined bit rate of 3500. I could crank this up to medium and my stream is going to look a lot better. But my computer is going to start chugging uh, for me personally. Again, if you have a higher end processor, you can probably get away with this like a Ryzen 2800 X or I'm uh, yeah, that's the newest one, but like an 1800 X, you can probably get away with this and your stream is going to look a lot better because of it. But Typically speaking, you're probably going to want to go a little bit higher up, maybe even maybe fast so you don't run into any issues and you can play different games. Um, faster is good. Very fast. You know, that's again, typical. You are going to see artifacting. So that's what that means, right? Play around with this. See what you can accomplish. Uh, start streaming onto like a, a test Twitch account um, or use the testing um, Google the uh Twitch bandwidth test kind of deal. And you can um, add something to your stream key to test without actually going live. And you can see how that affects your processor or your, your computer performance while you're playing a game. You can kind of fiddle with this. Um, profile, again, we're going to select main. Just again, quit Twitch wants us to tune. Leave this blank. Don't have a tune. This is going to change the quality in generally in a negative way. Don't do that. Leave all the X264 options blank. Okay. So that's an explanation of the two encoding options. So I'm going to go back to my settings here and I'm just going to do 3340 keyframe interval of two profile main default high quality. This is what I'm going to use. And I'm going to apply those settings. OK, we have our audio. We already have our audio at, a, at 160 and um, our bit rate is good. We don't need to worry about recording right now. Replay buffer. We don't need anything with the replay buffer. Don't even mess with it. And you're good to go. So now let's move on to our audio. OK, so this is a this is a good component and we'll do another video talking about audio a little bit more in depth. But um, basically what I'm going to have you do here is if you can set your audio bit rate to forty eight hundred or forty eight K forty eight thousand. I'm sorry, forty eight thousand hertz. In order to do that, you do have to go down here to your window sound devices. You need to go to your recording options. And um, I have a blue snowball microphone here. And I was able to set, sorry, there we are, this to 4,800 or 48,000 hertz. If your microphone and speakers and everything cannot, right, cannot accomplish this, if your microphone specifically cannot accomplish 4,800 hertz, leave this at 41, 44.1. Um, it's not going to be a noticeable improvement. It's not going to be, well, it is a tiny improvement. It's not going to be a hugely noticeable improvement. Don't worry too much about it, but I just wanted to touch on it real fast. Let's go to our video tab and take a look at our uh, base canvas, our output, our filters, and our FPS. So your base canvas resolution should be set to your monitor's resolution. My monitor is a 1440p monitor, so 2560 by 1440. So I'm going to set my base canvas to 1440. That's what my game will be running at. So that's what the output or the, the canvas resolution should be set to your if you're running your game or monitor or whatever you're streaming, um, this should be the same resolution as that. Your output scaled resolution is where we get to dictate how um, OBS will downscale your resolution from your base canvas into something that can be more easily streamed at a lower bit rate. So I typically set mine to 1280 by 720, which is the default here. Um, and that's just going to be 720p. And the reason I do that is because uh, it's, it, I mean, it's a lot less work um, to broadcast 720p at 3500 at a bit rate of 3500 versus 1080p. 
Uh, I do choose 1080p when I'm streaming something like Hearthstone, where there's very minimal movement, right? So there's not a, not a lot of artifacting will be happening. I don't need to compress it as much because um, it's generally a you know it's a kind of static screen. There's some movement, but not a lot going on. So uh, I can bump it up, and you can play with this and and find settings that look good to you. You know, you're gonna have to try this out. Um, you're gonna have to just kind of test it and see what see what happens for you. But I would recommend very 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 strongly to do 720p or lower if you want to. You can do lower so that you have a more crisp stream, but it will be maybe a little bit fuzzier, you know, around text and edges because you have a lower resolution, but you won't have as much artifacting or movement blur. Um, so let's stick to 720p. As for our downscale filter, let's go to our sharpened scaling here. 32 samples, right? That's going to be our best downscale filter. It should provide, should provide the best quality for you when you downscale your resolution. Some people have, uh, had more luck with the 16 sample. If you want it to be a little bit um, blurrier and not quite as blocky, then bicubic. Bilinear is by far the worst. And uh, generally speaking, don't pick that. It's going to look really bad. But you can do 16 or 32. I stick to 32. I found that to look the best. As for FPS, I stick to 30 FPS. You can stream at 60 FPS. And uh, you could stream at 60 FPS, 720p, again, if you have a game with not a lot of movement in it. Um, if you have a game with a lot of movement, like let's say you're playing Fortnite, I know that's huge right now, or um, PUBG, right? 60 FPS is going to be way smoother. The stream is going to look way smoother, but you will have more of that motion blur because you're doubling the frames per second that your computer has to encode and push, push to Twitch with a certain, within a certain bitrate requirement, right? We set that bitrate to a maximum, or well, a constant, actually. So I stick to 30. You, again, play around with these settings, but this is, kind of, this is gonna give you kind of the, the highest quality, most bang for your buck, so to speak. You can certainly try uh, 60 if you feel comfortable cranking your FPS up a little bit and you're not trying to, you know, uh, stream to the highest, the widest audience, and maybe your goal is more to stream to friends, or, or just as like you're, you're, you want to stream and just save the vods, the recordings on Twitch as like a cloud-based, you know, kind of storage place for your your games. You could set this, you know, you could crank the bitrate up, set this to sixty, and have a have a grand old time. But let's set it to let's set it to thirty. So that's what most people are going to show you are just output and video, we're also going to go into advanced. And um, the reason we're going to go into advanced is because I want to change some of this here under the video section in advance, these color spaces and color ranges. I found these to dramatically improve the quality of my stream. And you can, um, you can play around with this. I recommend extensively trialing these things. And let me explain why. Uh, right now, we're using a color space of 601 and a color range of partial, so only a partial color range. And I'm not going to get into the exact technical verbiage of this because it would take a while, but essentially, you're using only partial, you know, only a part of the color range that your typical viewer on a computer screen will be able to receive and, and display on their monitor. So your colors might look washed out. Um, or not as bright and vibrant. Blacks are going to look grayer instead of true black. Um, this can be good depending on what you're doing uh, because, and depending on what encoder you're using as well. I've noticed this looks a little different when using a different encoder, so play around with this. But here was my experience. When I was on 601 and partial, my stream, again, my, my dark areas looked a lot... Uh, a lot more gray, not so full and deep. They also, uh, my colors looked a little weird and washed out and not quite the right color. It was funky. It was like, uh, I, I noticed issues like uh, blue was purplish, had a weird purple tinge. It was funky, right? It was weird. So I went in and changed this and I changed this to 701 and this to full. And you don't have to do, it, it could be, you could, you could hybridize this and go for 601 and full or 709 and partial. Um, but 709 and full gave me a really, um, like my, my color range just dramatically increased. Obviously, this is a color range. And um, so 
my again my darks looked true dark my colors looked richer um, there was a lot more range in the color but because of that darker scene scenes look a lot darker right so you have to be careful with that if you're playing a really dark game this might not be for you this might actually make it look worse and unviewable because everything's dark right except really good colors um, but if everything's kind of gray anyways this might make it worse but play around with this i found good luck with 601 in full as well um, as a happy medium but 709 and full for the games i play dramatically improved like dramatically improved the quality of of everything it just looked more real it looked more like you were watching somebody play the game not watching a video of somebody playing the game if that makes sense um this here the color format just let leave that on nv12 uh you can do other colors here i wouldn't recommend doing other colors here um you can see here color formats other than nv2 nv12 are primarily intended for recording and are not recommended when streaming streaming may incur increased cpu usage due to color format conversion right so that tells you right there that you want to keep this on nv12 because if you don't you're going to have to reprocess it into nv12 and that's just more use more cpu usage on your computer there's no point in doing that when you can just set it to the color format that that um twitch requires but play around with these color spaces other than that you're pretty good to go right you can just spam that start streaming button and have a grand old time just go to town um, but again i cannot stress this enough play with these settings figure out the best settings for you personally because the, uh, I have helped a lot of people get their stream set up and let me tell you not everybody's settings worked the same way not not everybody could you know utilize the same thing my settings are not the same as um, somebody else's per se some of them are some of them might work just fine but other people have they have different hardware they have different um, a different internet speed maybe their internet is a little bit more variable right it's not very consistent so they need to drop that bit rate so that they don't end up dropping frames and causing a lot of uh, crap going on on their stream when they're trying to be live and have a good time, right? So play around with these, play around with these settings. Other than that, guys, that is our uh, tutorial for streaming settings in OBS Studio. I really hope you enjoyed. Drop a like on this video, comment if you have questions or concerns, or if you have, you know, if I miss something or miss explained something, please let me know. I always want to learn uh, and improve, so just drop a comment. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel as we are going to do further tutorials on this. We're going to go look through audio. We're going to go look through advanced settings on a lot of good stuff, guys, a lot of good stuff, like how to make your audio really nice and crisp, how to, how to uh, tweak your your you know your mic so you don't um sound low or high or anything we're going to do a lot of good stuff stay tuned for that so other other than that have a great one i'll see you next time yeah.